Hello and welcome to another episode of Baggers Chat. Nice beanies, boys. I like it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's for a, you know, a good cause this weekend. I think Monday, obviously, the Queen's birthday clash uh, for Fight MND. Uh, the, the big freeze, I think number eight, uh, I believe. Number eight? I think I've been yeah, to... Uh, old man being a, a D supporter, I've been to every single one of them. So uh, they've all, they've all been know. quite good clashes and... Um, it's always it's always good to see Collingwood lose in a big in a big game. It's good to see he's all wearing the beanies. Um, some more reluctantly than others. But Pato, um, how are you, mate? And how you been? Yeah, mate, good. Uh, long time no see. Um, I thought I would put the beanie on. Um, I don't really have a beanie head, so uh, I thought I would put it on for uh, of course the um the great cause. Um, my word, how good how good it's been for so many years. Um, as you said, Daph, uh, like it's the eight one this year, and like I mean, he's had it for. I don't know how long he's had it for, but fuck, he's had it for ages and he just keeps fighting. So it's it, it's just so good. And I think there was a stat the other day about something about they've raised almost just under $60 million just in Fight M&D, which is unbelievable. Um, yeah. yeah, so congrats to them. Um, awesome cause. And as you said, like the game Melbourne and Collingwood, like a few years ago, it was, it was a really good game. And it's, now that Collingwood's probably starting to rise again, um, Melbourne and Collingwood are... It's a great, um, it's a great game, and I think they've announced a few sliders this year, which um, which is really good. But um, also that's another, uh, like another way to get money and um, and viewership through the through the game. So it, uh, no, it's um, it's become a massive game for the season. Yeah, absolutely, mate. It's good to see. I think Ash Barty is one of them going down the slide, and uh, yeah. a few other big names getting around. It's a great cause, great story, and um, we wish uh, Neil well and uh, everyone involved. Um, on the day, I may be involved or maybe collecting the coins. It's still my bit. You know how it is. Um, but I will say, you say you don't have the beanie head, Pato. You could be worse if you look down the bottom there at Ethan. Um, <laughs> the, beanie, the beanie's about to consume his head. All right. But, <laughs> of course, we are here to talk about the mighty clash this Friday, boys. So, Bombers, doesn't get much bigger than this. Arch rival, 16 premierships apiece. Unlikely, any of these teams are unlikely to make it 17 this year. Um, but it's a big clash nonetheless. Friday night, 7.50 p.m., the mighty MCG. Last time we met was a very high-scoring affair, boys. I'm sure you are both there. I wasn't, but I'm sure you were. 107 or 123, uh, Luke Parks with one of the best tackles you ever see. Uh, 51 to 52 before that with a, with a win, and 74 to 33 with a 41-point loss. So two out of the last three, boys. It's a fairly decent uh, record. As of late, um, what about you, Ethan? How are you feeling going into the game, mate? And um, and yeah, give us your favourite memory as well. It could be since you were a kid, favourite uh, Bombers versus Blues memory. Yeah, um, Essendon's always a weird side for me. Uh, I think you know, there's always a bit of there's a bit of angst when you first them. It's same for Collingwood and uh, I guess Richmond in recent years, especially. Um, I think oh, I fucking hate them. I, I, I can't stand them, honestly. Like. I can't say any good thing about their football club, uh, unfortunately. Um, you know, I've got a few mates who are supporters. Good on them. Great blokes. But they support a huge <laughs> football club and uh, I wish the worst on them. We'll move on. <laughs> um, Favourite Blues Bombers memory. This, we, we're usually all right against the Bombers. We match up all right, especially when we were complete dog shit. Um, for mine, I think it's... Fuck it. I was little. I was little and it's Fev. Um, Fev uh, kicking seven at the eight, G. Eight, eight, eight. Yep. Uh, when we were down, what? 45. Forty-eight points, which is eight, which yeah. is eight goals. You, I think you're fine. Yeah, yeah. And actually, uh, I remember I was I was with my brother and my old man, and um, one guy behind us said, "Essendon, like some punsy, you know, Essendon supporter. You know, they talk it up. They they chirpy, chirpy. They've done nothing for ages, but you know." Um, they're sitting behind us and they're like, oh, Essendon are on track for 200. What? Feb did not let that happen, baby. <laughs> did not let that happen, baby. But one of the top three forwards to ever play for Carlton. Yeah, absolutely top three. Um, zero goals before, what, two minutes to go, second quarter. Kicks two goals just before half time, and still ends up with eight goals 
in one of the in the in the, in the clubs at the time. I can't remember if it still is greatest come from behind victory. May still be, but it definitely was at the time. Port may have been bigger recent since as since then, but um, it was definitely the biggest one at the time. And um, yeah, I was there. Being from Tassie, we don't go to usually I let Paddo talk first, but Ethan's brought it up now. So uh, usually, being from Tassie, we didn't get too many games as a kid, unfortunately. But um, we did fly over for that game with my dad, who's a obviously a blue supporter, and with a lot of my uncles and cousins who were all Essendon supporters. And uh, for most part of the day, it wasn't it wasn't a great day, but um, it certainly certainly ended up a great day. What about you, Paddo? What's your favourite, mate? Yeah, if that Bobber's Blues memory, um, yeah, mine is a massive standout, and that's um, Andrew Walker, Sky Walker, um, the Specky, 2011, I think it was. Um, my, I don't know how that didn't get Mark of the Year. Like, I think it was Andrew Cracker who won it that year, and I'm like, really? I think Eddie, like, opened, Eddie opened the checkbook, I think. I think you're fine. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, but Andrew Walker, um, yeah, what a talent he was. Um, and, yeah, I think we absolutely smashed him that game. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that was probably back in the glory days. That's probably um, the best sort of team that we've seen, um, <clears throat> that we've kind of seen this year. Um, not, this, not this year. In our life. Um, so, since now. Yeah, not anymore. Since, yeah, yeah. Not anymore. This is the best team this but, year. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah but, it um, was a great mark and a great game, mate. It was a, uh, we absolutely smashed them. But uh, it is interesting that it didn't get mark of the year. I don't know what all this is. on gang signs or something. But uh, um, it was interesting it didn't get mark of the year. But obviously it's voted on... By the people, so Pato, if you didn't vote for it, Ethan, and then I don't know. But um, all right, now we'll move on to potential inclusions. Of course, we've had the buy. Our last game was against the Pies, so two arch rivals back to back. Having them uh, all in a row is interesting, but um, potential inclusions. And who are you taking out, Pato? Swing the axe, mate. Yeah, mate. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to stick by my word. Um, so I've brought. I've brought in Caleb Marchbank, which I think would be a fantastic inclusion. Um, if not, if he's not fit, uh, debut of uh, the big Durden, Sammy, uh, Sammy Durden. So I think that would be a fantastic in um, because we probably don't thought like we probably don't really have anyone else. So I think he would be a great in. But I personally would have Marchbank in. Firstly, um, Matt Candy, of course, the return. Um, Jack Martin, I think his class. Um, that would be really handy to have in the side against the Bombers. But in my out, so obviously Jacob Wiedering, um injured. Um, Paddy Dow omitted, which I think is pretty um, – unfortunately, he just didn't, he didn't really perform. Jack Carroll, medical sub. And my big one is Matthew Cottrell. Um, yeah, 15 touches at 53% efficiency. Um, that, to me, doesn't really impress me. Um, I know he's been okay for the past few weeks, but – once again, if you have a bad game, and yes, a lot of them had a bad game, but 15 touches at 53% efficiency. You look at a guy like Liam Stocker, like he had probably, I think he had 13 touches or maybe 12. And everyone, and like, or like we were kind of shitting on his kicking. He walked out with 83% efficiency. So I think that that efficiency matters a lot. And to have 53% efficiency for, which is pretty low. Um, yeah, that's, that's a thing that he can work on in the VFL. I'll go to you, Ethan, for your ins and outs. But before we before we get to that, I think you'll probably agree with uh, obviously Weedering out, obviously Cottrell and Dow. I'll say you'd probably agree with, but um, sorry, not Cottrell. That's the one I wanted to get to. How do you feel about Cottrell being out, uh, Ethan? Oh, I, I'm not really. I don't mind. I don't mind, but I personally think um, you can't really judge too much on efficiency. It's based on the kicks you take on in a game. Um, I think he, I think you know, with with Cottrell, I think with many of our players, with ball in hand, they just seem a bit more safer. And I think he's willing to take on kicks and not be too safe or bomb down the line like last year. Um, and I, I feel like he he stacks up well against most wingers in terms of running capacity. I thought I thought Nunes was he really struggled, especially with a um, side bottom on his wing, predominantly on his wing on the weekend. So. Um, for my so obviously we'll move on to that. I think Nunes is out. Cottrell stays in. My ins, um, uh, Bam Bam, Sam Durden, I think will come in um, and play a vital role. Um, just in terms of um, you know Weeders being out, which is which is really unfortunate, but a good opportunity for a guy who um, has you know fought for another AFL gig. 
Um, and Jack Martin in, I thought it was a big opportunity missed last week by not playing him. I felt like, especially in that last quarter, he could have gone on, he could have gone on and kicked three goals in, in five minute space and killed the game and won the game for us. So, um, and my out to obviously Nunes, Paddy Dow. I thought he was, I thought he was okay, Paddy, but um, I think Kennedy just fits our system better. And I think Motlop, well, uh, just a, just a break for Jesse this week. So he needs another break or? The buy wasn't the buy the, for Jesse. The buy wasn't long enough. He needs another break. Oh, I, I, I just don't think. Um, I think Martin right now has got more impact on the game than my lot. Yeah, I agree. Um, not nah, well said, mate. Oh, I'm, I think I'm pretty similar to you. So I've got Kennedy coming in. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, Durden for me. I think for Marchbank. Um, I'm interested to hear your thoughts, Pat. But I think I don't know. He's just. I reckon he's played enough. I can't remember his last game. It'll be at least a couple of years. I just don't reckon he's played enough VFL. I think he's maybe played one and a half games, maybe more, and he went off for precautionary, precautionary reasons with his knee, um, I think it was, or maybe in another part, but I'm pretty sure it was his knee. And so, yeah, I just think he needs another VFL game or two um, and maybe maybe more, depending. But um, I'm not really – I'm not Andrew Russell. I'm not really a part of it. But I would say, it's from, from an outsider's point of view, I'd say Martin comes in and – I think Hayes could get a chance. Like, like I think he could be a chance. I'm not saying he definitely will play, but um, no, I will. I'll say he definitely will play. He's definitely playing. And Weed is out, obviously. Dow out for mine as well. Noon's out, which is almost a direct swap, basically, for Hayes. I could see him mate, potentially playing a yeah, wing position um, and maybe rotating with someone. But, yeah, just more, more or less a wing position. And, yeah, so Weed is down, Noon's and Carroll out. And Kemp, medical sub, as I think he should have been against... Collingwood, um, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but I think he just would have been um, a better fit than was it Carroll that came in, um, yeah. Yeah. especially with Weedier and going down. But uh, yeah, that's it for me. And speech, we'll get to you, mate, later on because you're not here. <laughs> uh, so usually my favourite part is speak up speechly. Um, that of course is in the reviews. My favourite part though for the previews, it's hard not to love this bit. Um, he gets up, he puts a lot of work into it, a lot of research and um, it's his baby really. Uh, Ethan, do you want to run us through the key matchups please mate? Uh, I've put so much research into this um, today. I definitely, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely wasn't written by someone else, but we'll move on. I've, I've put in the hard yards. I've really, you know, I've sweated it out and I've, I've found four matchups that I think will be vital in, in, in the, in the matchup this Friday night against the, against the, um, I'm not even going to name them. Uh, fuck them. But we'll move on. Voldemort. <laughs> the first matchup down back for us, Lewis Young, Burkins, uh, one of the you know best recruits of the year from the AFL, especially Carlton um, against two meter Peter, who, who, who is in form for a struggling Essendon outfit. Um, what, what are your thoughts on this matchup, Pato? Yeah, mate. Uh, Lewis Young, I think, is uh, he's been very good this year. Um, and the big two meter, Peter. Um, just on that, just very quickly, would you say that Essendon is your most hazard team, Daff? Uh, yeah, they're up there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Could, yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, I absolutely bet Collingwood. Oh, Richmond and Collingwood are probably the two, but Essendon. Just, I don't know. I just feel like they are so irrelevant. Um, they probably should be a big club and just say uh, sorry uh, to me, but um, moving on. Yeah, um, I think Wright's been pretty good this year. Um, I think he's probably been one of the shining lights um, with Essendon in a pretty dark year. So, um, yeah, hopefully Young, it's a big test because it's his first game, probably his first game in, in his career that is the pure key back. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see um, what happens, but I do trust Young. Yeah, I think he's been in form um, last... I think this season he's been pretty solid since he came in in the Hawthorne game. What, what are your thoughts on Lewis um, uh, Coulson? I'll, I'll, I'll return to yeah. straight away. Do you think it's definitely going to be Young that goes to two men to Peter? Or is there yeah. any other options? I think height-wise, I think they match up very well. All right. Well, I'll go with that then. I'll take your word for it. Um, yeah, I don't mind Peter Wright. I think he's, I mean, he's, he's playing for a pretty average team. Um, there's not many other people really didn't get goals from. They're all pretty hopeless. So um, Joe Danaher bloke went somewhat okay, but he's he's no longer there. And um, but yeah, Young, Young has been great since he got to the club. And I think you know too many players on a couple, but uh, I think we'll have that under control. Yeah, I trust Lewis, and I think this could be his you know coming of age game, as in terms of you know that elite 
defender, really covering for a weedering, which is hard to cover. So I'll move on to the midfield. And these two, these two tend to put up numbers every single week. Uh, very high numbers, extremely high, not just you know average numbers, just elite numbers. And this is Sam Walsh and Darcy Parrish. What are your thoughts on this matchup, Pato? Very interesting. It's always a good matchup, I think, in the in the midfield, um, Essen and Carlton. Yeah. Um, yeah, like as you said, I just think that they're both very like they get probably 30, 25 to 30 touches um every week. But I think with Parrish, he doesn't use the ball as well as Walshy. Like, I'm sorry, but he, I I don't know what all the hype is about about Parrish. Like, yes, I don't want to say this too much because this might be another civil argument where he has 25 and five goals, but um <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't know what all the hype is about Parrish. Um of course he's a great player, but people are saying like, yeah, he's probably on the on the levels of like a Paddy Cripps, like even maybe going for like a Brown. Like, come on, man. He's not a Brownlow, he's not he's not a Brownlow medalist. Me personally, I think Zach Merritt is probably a little bit better than Parrish. Even even a shield when he's playing well. But um, yeah, I think Walshy um he's been a fantastic player. Um, especially this year. Probably the past three or four weeks, he's been really good. He's probably picked up on his form from last year. So um, I see Walshy winning this one. Just just touching on Walshy, this is to you, Sammy. Um, how do you feel in the last month or so, um, the type of impact he's had? I think in the first few weeks, he, you know, his made his gain wasn't so high. His impact with ball in hand wasn't as good. He got plenty of it. He was still good. But in the last month, I think he's got back to that Walshy impact. Well, what are your thoughts on his last month? And how yeah. can he put listening game? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if that's, I don't know, if it seems like it's coincided with Cripps sort of um, drop in form, if you will, maybe if that's the right terminology. So I don't know if he's sort of freeing him up a bit more in terms of, you know, sort of, I don't know, taking the tag or whatever the reason is. Um, you, you watch it a lot closer than me. But yeah, no, he's definitely got a lot better. Came back, obviously, from an injury, had an interrupted preseason um, and was solid. But um, yeah, he's definitely coming of age and yeah, played very, very well the last few weeks. And I see him having another big game this week. I just reckon we're too, too, and not to go on about the Luke Parker thing or anything, but I think we are just too tough for him. Like, I think they're a bit, like, Parrish will rack it up. You can argue that he doesn't use it very well, like a Mitch, Tom Mitchell or something like that. But I just don't think they're very tough either. I think we're just tough footballers. It's like a lot of us, and like, you know, Kennedy coming back in as well will help. And, um, and Stock is playing, isn't he? Is he playing? Yeah. Is there any reason why he wouldn't be playing? Yeah, no, I think we're good. Um, and yeah, I just think we're a lot tougher than them. And um, yeah, I just see us cleaning them up, really. Yeah, I just see our mids being quite brutal around the contest. Um, it's just surprising to say that about a Carlton football side, but um, just every single one of them, just, just head over the ball. And Essendon just seemed, I'm not trying to, you know, they've got good mids. They've got really good mids, but I just think that it's a very different layout to a midfield. And I think if you really want to build a midfield, you'd rather build it like ours, just more tougher and um, inside. But you can't count them out. If they get a run on Essendon, we can't. Um, underestimate them. We'll move on to the ruck contest. And this is two young guns, in my opinion. Um, I feel, you know, different, very different ruckman. I feel, you know, Sammy Draper is more that, you know, old style ruckman, big, big fella can, you know, hit packs hard and um, pretty good um, at centre bounces and stoppages and stuff like that. But our ruckman in TDK is more that modern ruckman who's, you know, more that like that fourth midfielder, um, the skill set of a midfielder can go up forward, kick goals. I feel two, two very different ruckman, but I think it's a, it's a unique matchup. What are you, what are your thoughts on this, Pato? Yeah, mate, big Sammy Draper. Um, I actually don't mind the guy. Um, I think he's probably one of my more, um, likeable players at the Dons, like there's not too many, but um, yeah, I think Teddy K's. This is once again, he probably wasn't as good last week, um, against Cox and Cameron, so it's probably a chance for him to respond. Um, I personally think he's up to it. Um, I Draper's okay. Um, I think he definitely will have Teddy K in the tap set, like in the hit out sense. Um, but I think around the ground, Teddy K will probably be a little bit better. Um, he probably uses the ball a lot better when he gets the ball. So, yeah, Draper's okay, but um, I think Teddy K's got this one. He's a very old style ruckman, Draper. Just get it and key it, um, which I don't, know, I don't really rate these days. Um, well, for you, Sammy, you know what what can Teddy K do to you know really outplay Draper in terms of you know skill set, or is it more in the ruck taps? What are your what are your thoughts? I agree completely with what you said. Yeah, I think it's definitely skill set. Um, he's definitely one of the, as you said uh, a few times now, he's the older style uh, Ruckman Drapes. I do like him as well. He's, uh, he's a bit of character. And um, 
Yeah, he's not going to rack up disposals. Like, you look at TDK's average disposals, I don't have it on me. But and you look at Draper's, I'd say it'd be a good, comfortable half a dozen more. Like, he's going to get more of the ball. Um, he'll probably, you know, he's, you know, he's a pretty good mark, TDK. Um, I'd just say around the ground, I think uh, it'd be hard for Drapes. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just in a pure ruck sense, he's probably a better tap ruckman. But um, I think TDK's got him covered uh, in every other facet. Of the game, yeah, it will be interesting. I think he's more of a bash and crash ruckman Draper, but I, I, I rate him. I rate him. You know, he, he could be a good ruckman for a good team. So um, we'll move on now. Interestingly and, enough, yeah. sorry, just on that, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he comes from somewhere originally in England somewhere. Yep. All right, keep the thumbs up and put it down when I'm wrong. I think he didn't start playing footy till like at least like around ten. Could be three few years after, a few years before. So good story, and um, we don't like to pump up too many other opposition players, especially the Essendon players. But um, no, nah, I thought it was a good story on the Sunday Footy Show. And played, played soccer till he was sixteen. Yeah, no, sixteen. That was it. Yeah, full soccer player. Um, but yeah. but we'll move on, and um, you know, we move on to. The probably most informed forward in the competition um, in Charlie Kerno. And um, it's interesting because, you know, the Dons, I think their biggest weakness is a, is a key back. And, you know, apart from maybe a Ridley, who's more of that, you know, intercept third defender, who's really good at it. I think they struggle, especially with Hurley um, not playing. Um, the matchup against Laverde. And I think Laverde is interesting. He's played both ends of the ground. He's a bit of that, you know, we need you in that position. you got to fill it. We've had so many of those players in the past because we haven't been good enough um, in those positions. We haven't had guys who are set there every week, which we do have now, apart from the 1.5 thousand injuries we have um, currently. But what are your thoughts on this matchup, um, Pato? Yeah, Charles Curdo. Um, I think this is, once again, um, a big chance for him to... Maybe kick five plus. Um, Laverde is a yeah, is a <laughs> interesting one. Um, I don't rate him too much, too much. Um, I think once again, as you said, he's just been he's it, he's just been moved around too much, and um, I don't think that will really help his career. Um, when he probably changes his position every couple of weeks, so I think Laverde um, he's solid, but he's not up for the big Charlie Kerner. Sammy, how many, how many goals have you given Charlie this weekend, mate? Not at Marvel, so not as many, but uh, he'll still kick four. He'll kick five. I think he'll kick five. <laughs> not as many, just four. <laughs> yeah. just five. He would kick 10 against the Bombers at Marvel. Yeah. Oh, five at the G. Yeah. Mate. yeah, it would be interesting. Um, Especially yeah, Friday night game. You know, roof closed. He'd kick it bad. We love the the G's, the G's is a superior stadium, though. But he just won't kick as many, in my opinion. We do play better at Marvel, in my opinion. Yeah, we do. I think um, just more that up and down kind of game style, less width. But, video, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's it for the matchups, and um, it'll be an interesting game ahead. No, well done, mate. You've you've nailed it as usual. Um, we do, as we said, a lot of time goes into them, a lot of studying of players, and. Um, we appreciate the work you put into the show. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, um, all right, we'll get stuck in, into under the pump now. Um, obviously, refresher, last game was Collingwood. Uh, we lost, close game, could have won, should have lost by more. Look at it however you want. But, Pato, who is under the pump, mate? Yeah, so mine's not uh, necessarily a player. Um, mine is big uh, Mickey Voss and um, his, coaching, um, his coaching staff. Um, no, uh, no way, <laughs> Mickey, Mickey, Mickey Voss, Voss. Oh, Michael, no. Michael Mickey. Why not call him Mickey? The big Mickey no, Voss, no. why not call him Michelangelo? No, nah, mate, no, uh, no, oh, fucking, oh, why not? Michael, no, all right, no. Michelangelo Voss, why not? But, um, <laughs> I, I think, um, I think the big, um, I think it's probably his big, um, his biggest, uh, chance really to really respond because I mean, he has no way to ring. Probably not Mackay, but uh, the big Duffy boy, you are uh, touch on it a little bit later. Um, and, and, and obviously no pitting that. Um, he needs to find a different way to sort of get the job done. Um, and I, that's what I saw a little bit against Collingwood. Like, we didn't really have that plan B. Like, yes, we stuck to that structure, which is really solid. But when Wiedering went down, I personally didn't see too much of a change. Well, like, I know it's very tough when a big, probably our most important player goes down, but I just didn't see much of a change. So um, I think it's a big chance for him to respond and um, and his coaching staff, which is probably the most underrated thing. Like 
everyone says, yeah, no, the head coach is the most important part, but these, in, like these assistant coaches, they make a team. So, um, yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but I really want um, Bossy to uh, respond, and we, which I know he will. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, especially these days, is the amount of assistant coaches and uh, probably I was more now with the soft cap, whatever, but still just absolutely uh, a lot goes into the football club and um, we hope Michael's son can impress you this week. Um, all right, Ethan, we'll go to you now, mate. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I don't necessarily think they're under the pump. Um, just on your point, um, with not much change after Weering went down, I get it. But in a way, I think we have too much change in past years when someone goes down. Um, in terms of structure, like you don't want to be putting, you know, like you could have, but like a JSOS sent half back, it just changes the whole structure of the game that you've, you know, you've planned into the game. I, I don't think it really affected us too much. I think we, we, you know, us keeping that game plan actually kept us in the game. Um, not being too, you know, frenetic, keeping that same game style, trusting ourselves where we, we trust ourselves to the last minute. We probably should have won the game, the last minute of the game. So um, I, I agree. You, you got changes, but um, I think it's almost on them for not putting a Kemp as medical sub um, where you just swap in straight for weedering, which you don't have to change so much in the terms of a whole um, 22. So, yeah, I think, you know, under the pump, I think just this whole side, I think they were hurting after that Collingwood loss. You just tell after the game, it really meant uh, more than it has in the past few years. And, um, you know, they you know they let themselves down and, you know, that's that's footy, man. You're not going to win every week. So, yeah, big, big game ahead and under the pump for everyone. Absolutely. So, Pato's went after the coach. You've went after everyone. Um, and I'm going to go after no one because I do like to sit on the fence and um, not receive much hate mail. So, I'll go no one. But um, we just lost the hey, call. Man, we should go How about speech? How about speech? Speech. Like he's not under the pump. Oh, he's under the pump. He should be. Yeah. Come he on. He should be. Me. Not good <laughs> enough. Um, <laughs> yeah. No. Well said, boys. That's uh, good opinions. And I now I, I'm going to throw something up here. All right. And it's not right. It's not wrong. Probably is wrong. A lot of us, what I say is, but it could be a stupid idea. And tell me if it is. Picture it. This weekend, Friday night, big chilly. Jack Silvani's got the long sleeves on. He's playing full back. Just, just get the fist in there. Get the fist. No, don't say no yet. His dad's, you know, one of the greatest back on of all time, if not the greatest. Um, in the team of the century, always good. We can go on. Um, loves to recruit GWS players as well to this club. And also, it's in his blood. So could you see Jack Silvani playing in the back line? Maybe not even a full back, just in the back line in some sense. Long sleeves, stringer kicks it, um, only minutes to go, touched on the line, just like his dad did, sort of, um, and we went by maybe a point or two. Um, can you see it happening? Can you see Jack playing in the back line, Ethan? Yeah, oh, I think he can play any position. I think I think if you told me that he was going to be our second ruck a few years ago, you would have, I would have told you you're fucking stupid. But, okay, uh, you do point. anyway. <laughs> but um, no, I think you could definitely play down back, but I don't think there's no, there's no point of it if you bring a Durden in the mid-season draft. I think you've got to play a guy. In line, like I said, um, stick to the structure. Don't change too much. If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, um, But he could. You know, I'm not going to be like, oh, no, Jack's down back. I think he could definitely play center half back. He's got the reach. He's got the size. Why not? You say if it's not broke, don't fix it. Weedering went down. Was it broke well, against Collingwood? Could you have fixed it? You didn't want... We'll say how it was. The group chat, you didn't want to make any changes. I think Pato, I think you might have been MIA like usual. But um, I did. I thought something needed to happen. And I think something did happen a little bit. And we almost, almost clinched a victory. But So you wouldn't have changed anything during that Collingwood game, Ethan Daffy? No, I think... Um... The players kind of changed it themselves. I, I could see, you know, Newman was the general down there in the last three quarters, um, which Weedering usually is, which shows the, you know, the, the growth in the group and the leaders we have down back and around the ground. So, no, honestly, we don't need to. And Newman was playing tall. They didn't score very much, Collingwood. Well, I know they missed some shots, but what, 79 to 74? We, really? Yeah. They could have already scored a lot more if they kicked straight. But yeah, Pat. See, I just because let's be real, I personally think Mason Cox had his best game since Richmond and even against West Coast in the early match from final. He was taking marks because there wasn't another key back because Lewis Young was on a Meyer check or a Darcy Cameron, like there was no one else. So 
that's why, like, yes, but who do um, put on Cox? We'll put Lewis Young on a Cox and then even try Silvani because seriously, like, yes, like the structure was yes, we have a great structure, but, yeah, but Teddy K it was goes broken. Teddy K goes out of the rough. Who are you gonna put in the rough? Silvani. So who's gonna go down back? Corey Durden. Oh, That's shit. a good one. I agree. That's a good, oh, that's a good, good talk. Yeah. That's a good talk. Well, yeah. Good yeah. talk. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. All right. Uh, we'll get stuck into some questions now. We're nearing the end. So we'll get stuck into a few questions we've got sent through here. Um, we've got heaps. So thank you to all the uh, fans for sending in the questions. We always do appreciate it. And it's good to good to hear from you and good to engage with the fans. Um, we'll just select four tonight, boys, at random. And um, we'll get your opinions on them. So from my personal favourite from the from the four, or oh, no, I shouldn't say that actually now. All right. I don't have any favourites from the four. Uh, we'll go to Kane. Uh, Kane Imerson, good bloke. Uh, long-time listener, first-time questioner. I don't think it's his first time actually. <laughs> but anyway, um, do one or both, both, both of Durden and Hayes, so basically any of the mid-seasons play against the Bombers. One, two, who's playing, Ethan? Durden's a lock. Hayes... He's- I, you think seen form, I think Hayes' form in the VFL deserves a game in the AFL, but I don't think he'll play this week. But he could. I reckon they will. Both will. Both will. Why not? I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be different. Pato? Um, I think it's just the same as the um, inclusions. Uh, I think Marchie will be ahead of Durden if he's in, but I think Durden definitely debuting. Um, well, not debuting. For the club um, instead of Hayes. I think I don't think Hayes will play just yet. Do you think he'll play this year? Oh, 100%. 100%. He, he, apparently, he'd, he'd be leading the VFL BNF by so much. Like, and he's the best yeah. player. in. Like, he's one of the best players in the VFL this season. So, it's great. Get, Absolutely, great boys. Well done. Thank you for that. Thanks, Kane, for the question. We love your work. Uh, um, we'll get to the next one of Ken Z. Cripps. Ken Z. Cripps, I guess that's sort of how you say it. Um, I like it. Who is going to be on Sam Durham? Is that how we say it? Durham, Ethan? Yeah, Durham. Um, he's a pretty he's a pretty handy player for Dons. Um, he's a young young player. They're a very young side, the Dons. So um, I think he's very similar to a, a, a Ginevan. So I'd imagine Adam Saad or a uh, maybe Stocker. I think Saad. I think Saad's been matched up well in those small forwards, uh, beating him in the air and then beating him on the ground as well. So I think Saadi All-Australian is incoming. Just going to say that. No, well said, mate. That's definitely a good call. Um, what about you, Pato? Who shuts Big Sammy down? Uh, Nick Newman for me. Uh, I think Nick Newman will go to... Uh, because, yeah, I mean, as we probably mentioned, there's a few guys that are potentially going to come back for the Don. So um, I think Nick Newman for me. Well said, just a player that's been under the radar for more. Um, I do like Newey. I don't know about your boys' thoughts on him, but um, no, I do... Big fan of Nick. He doesn't really get talked about much. If he's under the pump or played a great game, let's be real. But like, but he's he's in the middle of the road and does his job. If, if yeah. what do they say? No press is good press, bad press. I don't know, something like that. I don't really know what it is. Yeah. Um, but no, it's good, mate. Uh, another question, probably my favourite Daffy of all time. Uh, I've got to say, um, Daff thirty four has always done enough to keep his spot. Um, we'll go to you, Pato. Um, yes, hundred percent. Um, I think his response, well, not really response, but his performance against Collingwood, um, two goals late in the last quarter, like, like yes, we didn't get the win, but that's sort of clutch moments there. Um, they need to be kicked and he kicked them. So I think he's doing his job very well. Like, yes, he had a quiet game, but so did Gurdon, so did Fisher, so did Jesse Motlop, um, all these guys, so many options. So I think, um, I think always oh, been good, but um, yeah, no, I think that 100% he's um, earned his spot. Uh, yeah, well said, Pato. Um, I probably agree with that, mate. He's done. He's done all right. It's probably not as safe as for me as he is probably for you. Now, I'm interested to go to Ethan here. Um, he's the son of the the questioner, the great man himself. <laughs> and I think you, Pato, loved the two goals. I, I'll throw you under the bus here in the sense that you did say, oh, he, he rocked up late and kicked his two goals. You weren't. I'm sure you were a fan of him in the moment, but. You were a bit. You saw a different view. Had a, you have a bit of a different view on always. I don't know if he's a, a hated figure in the Daffy household or what the goal is. But <laughs> go to you, Ace. No, I like Maddie. I like Maddie. Um, he, he he works his ass off, which I love. Um, I 
uh, you know, his two goals were fantastic. Clutch as, I agree with Pato 110%. But where was that in the first three quarters? But I agree, no one else has played that great either. So it's, it's tough. It's tough for a small forward to be able to get goals on the board when the inside 50s were pretty woeful on the weekend, considering our standards in the past few games. Kick those two goals, good, kept us in it really. So um, just quickly on this, I saw a tweet this morning uh, from up the baggers um, talking about Matt O's role. He's been averaging 10 touches, uh, 66% kicking efficiency was above average for a small forward. Uh, only 0.8 goals a game, but when we're scoring that highly, he almost doesn't need to be kicking too many. Um, 4.3 score involvements, four tackles a game, which is elite. I think he's top three in the league uh, uh, for small forwards. Um, 2.1 tackles inside 50, which is top five in the league as well. Uh, and 15.5 pressure acts a game, three marks for a small forward and two inside 50. So I think that just proves why he's in the side. There it is, mate. Well said. And you're talking very fast, so I think I'm getting the wrap up here. So thanks, Daff34, for the for the question and um, <laughs> great thorough answers, boys. But we better get it done, otherwise, I think it might pass Ethan's bedtime. So we're stuck into the match predictions now. Uh, we've got speeches written down here, which we'll get to in a second. But we'll go to you now, Pato. Um, how do you see the game unfolding, mate? Uh, yeah. So I've got the first goal. Um... Jack Silvani, um, playing off centre half back uh, to really, uh, to really enjoy, um, to really please a big dafter. Um, him play a half back, so I think he'll uh, take a take a mark against Big Peter right now. Nah. Um, he'll be, um, he'll he'll be playing um, where he's probably been playing a, his whole career really. Um, I think Sosa been it, he's been once again he's been under the radar. Um, he just keeps on trying, um, and I think that when he gets the ball, he, he actually uses it really well. So first goal, Jack Silvani, um, best on ground, Sam Walsh once again. He's just been continuing to really improve his game. And once again, he can, he can it's a scary, you know, well, like it's quite a scary side, but he can really actually maybe push to another level, like a Sam Walsh level, which is really scary to see. Um, and let's hope he can do that. And I've got the Blue Bags by 25. Um, I don't expect a massive, or I can't really expect a massive performance. Yes, it's Essendon, but I think my mate Barney has kind of pulled, pulled he's kind of pulled me down a peg because he's kind of saying a bit stuff like, a bit of stuff about the rivalry game. Like you can't expect a 65 point game, um, like a 65 point win. So I think 25 points, um, I think it's, res- it's obviously not the biggest win, but um, it's still a win. Can I ask why? I know it's busy. The episode has been a bit longer, but we'll go, we'll go. Why can't it be 10 goals? We're better than them. Oh, one, 110%. I would love it. Like a 10 goal win, but I personally, like Essendon have been pretty pretty shit this year, um, and there's no better game to really respond against us like rivalry game. Um, and we haven't really been as good um, past probably the past well last week especially, but even the past month we've just been I don't know why I just feel like we've just been a little bit um, off. Um, I think it's Sydney we probably responded in Giants, but um, yeah, I think it's a tough one because obviously I would love a ten goal win, but um, but I just don't see it happening. Just don't see it happening. Yep, fair enough, mate. Well said. What about you, Daff? I agree. I think um, rivalry games, are, they tend to be close, like last week. I think um, no team will really blow teams out of the water. But um, for me, I think we're better. I think we're stronger. I think we're tougher. Uh, more threat up forward. I think we'll beat them by 43. I think it'll be a bit of a response from our boys. Um, I know we don't. Um, I just said we won't blow them out of the water, but I feel no. I just feel like it'll be one of those neck and neck games where they think they have a sniff, they have a sniff, and then we just um, we just kill them in the end. So hopefully, and I've got uh, Charlie Kerno first goal. Um, I think that'll be first of his seven. I think he'll pull out a Jared Wade against the Bombers and best on ground Sam Walsh. I think he will um, make a late run for the Brownlow medal. Well done. So he kicks seven goals and he's not best on... He's not, not best, best on, on ground. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Mate, Walsh, Walsh must have done 50, something special. Walsh will have 53 and Sam then... <laughs> and Sam, Sam, Sam then 21 intercepts. <laughs> All right. Um, Speechly has got his predictions here for me. Um, so he has got the Blues winning, surprisingly enough, actually. I'll get it up wow. here. He's got us winning by 26. So... That's wow. actually quite a bit for more you than have. me. More than me. Boy, oh boy. Which is crazy. I know, right? Um, 
So the Blues by 26, first goal is Fisher, for exactly boy, and yeah. uh, best on ground, Sammy Doherty. So there we go. Yeah, don't uh, mind I it. have, yep. first goal, a bit of a different one. So if he is offered up in uh, first goal scorer markets on any sports betting companies, gamble responsibly, they'd be paying a bit. Adam Saad against the old side. I just reckon he could maybe get a hand, maybe, I don't know, who someone has it from 50, they haven't got the legs, maybe a Corey Durden or something like that. And then, oh, there's Sardis. Or maybe we'll go this, we'll go this side, actually. And um, runs around the left <laughs> and slots him from 55. Uh, best on ground as well, just purely, not not purely from that goal, but it did contribute to it. So he's best on ground, and the Blues win by 32 points. I wouldn't mind Sardi kicking like a Chinna, like, like, not that one that he kicked during the training session. I think it was like a Chinana, I think he called it. Yeah. Uh, imagine that from like... Just out of nowhere, big Adam Sard comes out of nowhere and keeps a goal from um oh, I against the bombers. I reckon that sort of kick, I reckon that sort of kicker we paying five grand for him to kick. <laughs> <laughs> my one not so much though, because my one is gonna happen. So <laughs> there you go. All right, first goal scorer to the big fella. All righty, VFL preview, of course, against the bombers at Windy Hill. Um yeah, get there if you can, it'll be nice and windy. And um, it is actually a good ground. I like there. I used to work at the gym near there. Beautiful ground. One forty-five Saturday. Uh, Hayes potential will be more than likely be there. Dirt potential debut as an AFL to play up in the VFL if he doesn't play AFL. Obviously, uh, assuming he'll be playing one of them. So get down there if you can. I know you boys will definitely be there and um, and cheer on the mighty uh, Blues. And that's about it, then, boys. Anything else? No, Big mate. Game. We Massive game. Big one base. thing, one thing. Uh, we'll put a link in the bio um, to make sure to donate. It's a big fight, M and D. Um, make sure we get around the cause. Um, and if you're going to the Queen's Birthday Clash, um, I think it would be an absolute ripper. Um, but it's not really called the Queen's Birthday Clash anymore, is it? Like it's kind of just now called the fight M and D sort of game, um, the big freeze sort of game. So now, like as we mentioned at the start, it's just really taken, um, like it's really taken off, and it's just so good to see that. Um, that pretty much all of Australia and pretty much around the world as well um, is getting around the cause. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, it's great to see. And um, hopefully we can raise a bit of money for them. And um, I might, I haven't heard back yet, but I could potentially be there with shaking my little coin thing. So if you see me, um, I don't know, say hello, I guess. And um, yeah, that's <laughs> it from me, us boys. And like, subscribe, share, um, get around the podcast. It's been, it's great fun doing it every week um, for us three. Speech obviously doesn't have as much fun. But um, that's all right. And uh, as always, <laughs> Mitchell Pattinson. And as always, boys, yep, the baggers. The baggers. Oh, good baggers. Oh, boys. Uh-huh.